Welcome back. Uh, you've made it through module four. So this week, you've looked at a lot of technical detail, uh, including Friis's formula and the algebraic description of the entire GPS receiver. And so now, as a nice relaxing interlude, we're going to have a navigation in our lives module and just look at GPS in sports. And so this is pretty much non-technical description of how we find uh, GPS in use in many sports. And uh, GPS came into sports in a natural way. Uh, GPS first uh, was used in sports that tra required traditional navigation anyway, such as boating, like sailing, uh, or hiking, where people would navigate using compasses, maps, and so on. And, and they started to use GPS in these sports in the kind of natural way that you would expect. But it evolved from there, and then GPS began to be used uh, to make measurements of things that were otherwise difficult to measure. So this is something you may have experienced with yourself. So running watches such as this one, you can measure running speed. Measuring the speed that you're running if, without GPS is quite a difficult thing to do. Measuring the distance that you've walked or run. And then in golf, uh, GPS has really taken off as, a, as an aid to golfers, knowing how far you hit the ball, you walk up the ball, and, a, and your GPS will measure how, how far you hit it from where you hit and how far away is the green and so on. And then GPS is now finding itself in sports to enhance or even enable TV coverage where TV coverage was difficult for the particular sport or almost impossible to see what was going on. And the two uh, great examples of this are auto racing and sailing. And we'll go through those in, in some detail uh, in, in this video. So let's start with auto racing, and in particular NASCAR racing in the US, where the cars look like this, and they race around an oval track, and they're very, they packed very closely together. That's the style of the racing, and so it's quite hard to see uh, what, who's who, and so for the commentators to, to describe what's going on in terms of you know, the third car on the left, it's, it makes sports coverage difficult, and so this is one of the first places where GPS found its way into television coverage, and you get images such as you see on the screen uh, over there. You get lines coming down to the cars, and as the cars move around the track, those lines move with them. And that is enabled by the fact that they have a very precise GPS unit in the car and an inertial measurement unit, which I'll, I'll show you in a little bit when we talk about the sailing application, which is a similar type of application. So in the control panel where the uh, sportscasters are doing the announcing, they have something like this in front of them. And so they can go and click on this and, and select a particular driver. So for example, this guy and this one, and that will pull up, that'll highlight them for those particular cars. And, and then it's clear to the viewer who they're talking about. So, so uh, so that required GPS. It also requires uh, graphics to be overlaid on the video. And so that's a, a very important part of the technology. It's, it's not directly related to GPS it's, itself, but it, it, the company uh, that did this, uh, there's several companies that all work together and some got bought by the others. One called Liveline and Sport Vision, as you see there. They are the same companies that provide for you something that you, you're probably used to seeing, which is the overlays that you see on uh, running track and ice skating track as shown here, uh, and in, in swimming pools in the Olympics. They'll put the, the flags of the contestants, and you'll sometimes see the world record line moving and the, the athlete chasing it. Now, these graphics are put on, on the video. They're not, they're not actually there in real life, but they're done so well that people watching it on TV actually don't realize that they're not there in real life. And this one's particularly interesting. It was in uh, Salt Lake City 2002, as you can see. Uh, and uh, the company that, that puts these graphics on got a lot of hate mail from the Canadians who accused them of tripping their athlete. Because as you can see, the, they fell down right at the beginning of the flag. Of course, the flag isn't there uh, on the ice. It's only put on later. But the, the, the image that's created looks very real, and so that's a very important part of that. And you'll, you'll see that in use uh, in the following video, which shows us how this kind of technology with GPS is used uh, to enable television coverage of sailing.
cool part about LiveLine, we keep talking about it, we keep talking about how incredible the technology is. It's the first time that they have live graphic insertions from a moving helicopter. to know where the boats are precisely and their attitude in order to show who's ahead and who's behind and to highlight them with the flags and information in the video. Well, the yellow line we're seeing is the course boundary the orange lines were three boat length and six boat length circles. We have technology that's keeping track of the boats. Their GPS and their tracking system is within centimeters. Okay, so in that video, what you saw was the, 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 the result of, of a very complex system uh, that has a block diagram shown here. And at the heart of this is GPS, uh, not just any GPS, but differential GPS with centimeter accuracy. Uh, you might have noticed they mentioned the centimeter accuracy in the video. Uh, so they have differential GPS with centimeter accuracy combined with an inertial measurement unit. And so have uh, one of those inertial measurement units here, so that's what it looks like. Cost about $40,000. Inside of this thing uh, are ring laser gyros and accelerometers. And th this is what's known as a tactical grade inertial measurement unit. It's usually found on fighter aircraft. And this is what is inside those NASCAR cars, along with GPS, and what's inside these America's Cup boats. Uh, and then they have a differential GPS with an antenna, such as this one. And if we go and look at a close-up, you can actually see this antenna sitting in this picture here. So this guy is cleaning the camera, and the antenna is right behind him. There it is. So that antenna up there is this antenna here that I'm holding my hand. So it's a survey-grade GPS antenna capable of very precise phase measurements. And there you see a close-up. And in full glory, in action on the water, you can see it at the back of this boat right there. So to give you an idea of scale of these things. And so that antenna sits on the boat back here. And what if we highlight a few of these lines, you'll see a differential GPS system in operation here. The antenna is measuring the signal from the satellite. And then here we have a reference station on the shore and communication between the two of them. And so you learned about differential GPS from Professor Enger, and this is a, a, an application of it, a very interesting uh, application for sports. And so you'll see similar triangles to every point that's being located. The buoys are located, the helicopter is located, and all the different boats are located. And then the way they know where the front of the boat is, by using the inertial measurement unit, they know the heading of the boat very precisely. And so even though the antenna's at the back and the boat is 70 foot long, they work out exactly the, where the front of the boat is. And so all of those graphics that you saw uh, on the video uh, can take place.